All right, ready to dig in. This time we're taking a deep dive into the milpa. The milpa. This ancient Mesoamerican way of farming. But it's way more than just, you know, planting some seeds. Oh, uh, it's a whole philosophy of working with nature. Really is. And, you know, the really interesting thing is our listeners sent in a whole stack of research suggesting this milpa is like the ultimate example of what's called anti-fragility. Anti-fragility. Yeah. You know, a lot of people hear that word and think, huh. But yeah. it's actually a pretty simple concept. Break it down. Instead of just bouncing back from a setback, right? imagine getting stronger because of it. Oh, I like Like, it. like a muscle building from a tough workout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anti-fragile systems. They actually oh. thrive on challenges. And the listener wants to know, yeah. how does the milpa embody that? Yeah. And I got to say, it is fascinating stuff. That's what we're here to find out. And ultimately, they're hoping to glean some wisdom from the milpa for building sustainable bioeconomic systems. Especially those focused on a circular economy, which we're big fans of around here. Big fans. So first things first, what exactly does a mill pot look like? Paint me a picture. Okay, so imagine a field. Okay. Bursting with life. Right. Not just, you know, rows and rows of one crop, but this vibrant mix. I like it. The heart of it uh -huh. is what's called the Mesoamerican Trilogy. Okay. Maize. Okay. Beans. All right. And squash. The three sisters. Exactly. Yeah. All supporting each other. Uh-huh. But then you might also have some chilies adding some spice. Oh, okay. Avocados offering that creamy goodness. Ooh, getting hungry. Even fruit trees reaching for the sun. So it's like like a delicious salad bowl growing right out of the ground. That's a great way to put it. And you know what? What? That diverse mix is actually one of the keys to the Milpa's anti-fragility. Okay, I'm starting to see it. It's like, um, you know, diversified investment portfolio. Oh, yeah. You're spreading the risk so that if one crop struggles, the others can kind of pick up the slack. But it goes even deeper than that. Okay. The research you sent in uses a really interesting term to describe the Milpa. It calls it a meta ecobiont. All right, now we're getting a little fancy. Yeah, yeah, but I promise it's not that complicated. Okay. Break it down for us. So an ecobiont is a way of seeing an organism within its whole web of interactions. Yeah. So not just the biology, uh -huh. but its relationship to the environment. Right. Even the cultural practices around it. Mm -hmm. Like with the milpoc, it's not just about the plants themselves. Yeah. It's about the generations of knowledge right. passed down. About how to nurture them. Yeah. Exactly. A meta-ecobiont then is a network of these ecobionts, all intertwined. Oh, okay. So we're talking about a system of systems. Yeah. Amazingly complex and interconnected. Exactly. And that interconnectedness, yeah. that's what makes it so adaptable, so anti-fragile. Think yeah. about it. The Milpa has been around for centuries. Wow. Weathering all sorts of storms, literally and figuratively. Right. Climate shifts, yeah. social changes. Yeah. It just rolls with the punches and keeps on thriving. So we're not even just talking about resilience here we're talking about something that's getting stronger because of the challenges right okay now i really see that muscle building analogy in action but i mean what is it that makes it so good at adapting is it just the variety of plants well that's definitely a big part of it that portfolio effect we talked about right but the milpa yeah. also champions biodiversity okay which strengthens the entire system how so well you've got beneficial insects moving in Soil gets healthier, uh -huh. and you need fewer chemical inputs. It's like building an immune system for the land itself. I love that. And then there's a the human element, too. Mm -hmm. This research you sent highlights how farmers have selectively bred crops over generations. Oh, yeah. To make them even tougher. Yeah, I read about that compact maize variety in Oaxaca. Oh, yeah. They're practically windproof. Well, perfect for hurricane zones. Exactly. It's like the maize itself is hitting the gym. Totally. And that knowledge built up over time right. is like a living database, uh -huh. constantly being updated and refined. Right. That's the beauty of this meta ecopian. Yeah. The milpa is constantly learning and evolving. This is like blowing my mind. It is amazing. I'm already seeing how much we can learn from this system. <laughs> I know, right? But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, there's a study you mentioned in Hidalgo, Mexico. Yes. That looked at milpas in two very different environments. Can you tell me about that? Ah, yes. The Hidalgo study, this is a fascinating one. It compares milpas in the dry, semi-desert, Alto Mesquital region. Okay. With those in the lush, humid Huasteca region. Talk about contrasting environments. Yeah, wow. But what's really striking is the role of those edible herbs, the quillotites. Right. 
particularly in the alto miss beetle where you know food diversity is naturally lower yeah yeah i remember that from the research yeah yeah but there was also something about the quelatites and the overall resilience of the communities right and so this is where it gets really uh -huh. interesting hold on to your hats Okay. Because they found the communities facing greater social vulnerability yeah. and food insecurity yeah. actually had less diversity of coilites in their milpas. Whoa, really? That's so counterintuitive. I know, right? It's like the coilites are a barometer, hmm. a sign of something deeper going on. I am very intrigued. I definitely want to unpack that more. Well, we're going to have to. Yeah. Because we're out of time for this part of the deep dive. All right. Well, hold that thought, everybody, because we're going to unpack the Hidalgo study even further in the next part of our deep dive. Absolutely. And trust me, there's a lot more to discover. A lot more. All right. So we're back, and I'm still kind of reeling from that Quello Lights revelation. It really makes you think. Like, it really is amazing how this deep dive keeps uncovering these layers of complexity within the milpa. Right. But before we, you know, go full on plant detective, yeah. let's zoom out a bit. Okay. You mentioned earlier how the milpa really embodies a lot of the principles of the circular bioeconomy. It really does. Can you help connect those dots for me? Absolutely. So the circular bioeconomy is all about, yeah. you know, using biological resources right. in a sustainable way. Uh -huh. It's about closing loops. Okay. Minimizing waste. Right. Creating systems that regenerate. Yeah just like nature does, Yeah. and the milpa. It's a master class in circularity. All right, give me an example. How does it put those principles into action? Okay, so think about how it treats the soil. Okay. All that crop rotation right. and the organic matter uh -huh. from all those diverse plants yeah. keeps the soil healthy and fertile, Okay. meaning you don't need to rely as heavily on synthetic fertilizers, Right. which you know, are a huge environmental burden. Yeah, definitely. Often depend on fossil fuels to produce. So it's like a two-for-one deal totally less pollution yeah. healthier soil for the long haul it's a win-win that's smart and it goes even further than that okay often milpas even incorporate livestock oh interesting chickens uh, pigs right they feed on the crop residues uh -huh. turn what would be waste into valuable fertilizer for the fields so it's like another closed loop Exactly. This beautiful dance of interdependence. It really is. I'm like picturing this bustling ecosystem yeah. where everything has a purpose. Right. Nothing goes to waste. It all works together. Mm -hmm. It's kind of poetic, honestly. It is. And that harmony extends beyond the farm itself. Oh, interesting. You know, the milpa is really woven into the social fabric of a community. Okay. Farmers sharing knowledge, uh, helping each other out, right. passing down traditions through generations. Yeah. It creates this safety net okay. of shared experience mm. and resilience. I love that. This is making me think about how fragile our modern food system is in comparison. Oh, absolutely. So reliant on long supply chains, yeah. single crops, mm. tons of chemical inputs, right. like one hiccup and the whole thing could come crashing down. Yeah, that's a great observation. I mean, the milpa offers such a stark contrast. Doesn't it? Like a reminder that diversity yeah. and local knowledge mm. can create true resilience. For sure. Not just in the face of like environmental shocks, but social and economic ones too. Exactly. So, I mean, what lessons can we take from the milpa to, yeah. you know, try to build a more robust food system mm -hmm. for the future? One that can adapt and thrive in the face of all the uncertainty that the world keeps throwing at us? Well, first and foremost, the melpa just screams diversity. Right. And not just in crops. Yeah. In farming practices. Okay. Knowledge systems. Uh-huh. Even business models. Yeah, yeah. It's a reminder that there's no one-size-fits-all solution. Right. We need to be able to adapt to different environments. Yeah. And different needs. Makes sense. So, like, blending the best of traditional knowledge with modern technology is finding the right balance for each situation? Exactly. And, in fact, the research you sent even suggests that incorporating compatible modern technologies could potentially enhance the milpa. Oh, interesting. As long as we're careful not to disrupt its core principles. Right, right. Like, imagine using precision agriculture to optimize resource use okay. or developing new crop varieties uh -huh. that are even more resilient to climate change. That's exciting. It is, but you know. It is a delicate dance. It is. We don't want to lose what makes the milpa so special in the first place. Absolutely. Mm. Any intervention should be done with deep respect 
for traditional knowledge right. and practices. It's about collaboration, yeah. not imposition. For sure. It's about learning from the milpa, not trying to reinvent it. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, this is making me think about the milpa as a model for a whole different way of being in the world. Oh, how so? One that's less about control okay. and more about partnership with nature. That is a profound insight. It really is. Yeah. The milpa embodies this worldview where humans are woven into the fabric of life. Right. Not separate from it. And, you know, that perspective yeah. is crucial. It is. As we face these mounting environmental challenges. Okay, so the milpa offers this incredible blueprint. It does. For sustainability. But the big question is, yeah. how do we actually put these lessons into action? That's the million dollar question. Not just in agriculture, but in like all aspects of our lives. That's right. And it requires a collective shift in mindset. Okay. We need to move away from this focus on individual gain. Yeah. And embrace a more holistic approach. Okay. That prioritizes the common good, mm -hmm. learn to value diversity right. and adaptability. Yeah. Recognize that change is inevitable. It is. And resilience comes from embracing it, mm -hmm. not resisting it. It's like we need to become more Milpa-like in our thinking. Exactly. We need to cultivate that same spirit okay. of collaboration, uh -huh. innovation, yeah. and deep respect right. for the interconnectedness of life. All right. So let's get back to that intriguing finding Oh yeah. about the Quellets being a potential indicator of community resilience. Yes. Yes. Let's dig into that a little deeper right. and see what other secrets the Hidalgo study holds. All right. Let's do it. And so you're telling me that in communities struggling, they actually have less variety of quellets. Yeah. It's a real head scratcher. It seems like it should be the opposite, right? More diversity, more resilience. You'd think so. Yeah. But one possible explanation is that when a community is facing food insecurity, mm -hmm. their focus might shift to just getting those calories on the table. Okay. Makes sense. You know, prioritizing those core crops. Yeah, the maize, the beans, the squash. Exactly. Yeah. And maybe there's less room or resources left for the quellates. So it's like this, like a trade-off. Yeah. They're forced to just go all in on right. those like most reliable sources of calories. Yeah. Even if it means sacrificing some of that dietary diversity. Exactly. But then remember, they also found something interesting. Oh, yeah. About older farmers and quellates. That's right. Yeah. What was that? Well, the study found that milpas managed by those over 60 okay. tended to have greater diversity of quellates. Interesting. Which really suggests that experience uh -huh. and traditional knowledge play a role in maintaining that variety. Right. So the older farmers, they have that deeper understanding of so, like the nuances mm, of the milpa. They see the long-term benefits yeah. of those you know, seemingly less essential plants. Like the quellates. Exactly. They're like the keepers of the quellates' wisdom. That's a great way to put it. This is making me think about the bigger picture, though. You know, we've been talking about the milpa as this incredibly anti-fragile system. Right. But, I mean, are there limits to its adaptability? That's a good question. Are there challenges that even the mighty milpa might struggle to overcome? Well, it's true that the milpa has weathered countless storms yeah. over centuries. Right. But it's not invincible, you know? It does face a whole new set of pressures yeah. in our modern world. Like what? Well, one of the biggest is globalization. Okay. And its impact on markets. You know, as small-scale farmers are getting pulled into these global commodity chains, uh -huh. they might feel pressure to specialize uh, in cash crops. Yeah. To focus on, you know, what sells on the international market mm -hmm. rather than maintaining that diversity. Right. Of the traditional mill pot. So it's like the allure of short-term profits yeah. could end up eroding the very foundation you know. of the mill pot's resilience. Yeah. Trading long-term stability uh -huh. for a quick buck. And then there's climate change, too. Right. You know, more extreme weather, yeah. unpredictable seasons. Mm -hmm. All of it can really put a strain on even the most adaptable system. Right. And we know that the mill pot has historically been able to evolve with the climate. It has. But the pace of change no, no. that we're seeing now yeah. is unprecedented. It is. So it does sound like yeah. the milpa, for all its strengths, wow. is facing some serious headwinds. Yeah. So what can we do? Is there any way to protect and support this incredible system There's a... so it can continue to thrive? For sure. I think it starts with recognizing the invaluable knowledge okay. held by these milpa farmers. Mm. They are the true 
stewards Fair. this tradition. Yeah. Their expertise mm -hmm. is essential. So we need to support them. Yes. How do we do that? Well, things like training programs, okay. access to resources, uh -huh. and fair prices for their crops. Right. These things can go a long way in ensuring the Milpa's future. So it's about empowering those who are already on the front lines, right? Exactly. Of sustainable living. But we need to be looking ahead, too. Okay. You know, fostering research mm -hmm. and innovation mm -hmm. that builds on the principles of the Milpa. This could involve, you know, developing new crop varieties that are even more resilient to climate change. Okay. Or figuring out how to integrate, you know, appropriate technologies right. without... Okay sacrificing the milpa's ecological integrity it's like finding that sweet spot right between yeah. respecting tradition uh -huh. and embracing innovation exactly and you know yeah. maybe just spreading the word about the milpa right and all its wisdom yeah can inspire others to adopt similar approaches i love that you know this deep dive has been a real revelation it has been fascinating and milpa is so much more than just a way to grow food it really is it's like a philosophy yeah a testament to human ingenuity mm -hmm. and resilience yeah working in partnership with nature it's honestly given me like a lot of hope i feel that but also like the sense of urgency yeah. like we need to learn from the milpa we do not just for the sake of agriculture right but for the sake of like our planet and ourselves. It reminds us that we're not separate from nature. Yeah. We're part of this grand interconnected web. We are. And, you know, if we want to create a more sustainable... Yeah. Uh, we need to start thinking and acting more like a milpa. I love that. Thank you so much for taking this deep dive with us. This is a good one. And to all of you listening out there, until next time, keep learning, keep questioning, and keep growing.